welcome to another episode of Heart Factor. Sorry he's not Will. Will is off tonight. Yeah, yeah that was a little a little abbreviated and right in my ear. I Sorry. like it when Will's doing it from, from Reno, Nevada. Yeah, mm-hmm. me too. Well, is, is Will off tonight because he's so upset about the impeachment? Oh, he's so mad. He's but he's, he's not mad because Trump got impeached or didn't get impeached. He's just mad at the process. Yeah. No, he's, he's just off. Yeah, yeah, he's off. That's not because of the impeachment. All right, guys, so today is a huge, huge day. We're going to take us through a bunch of stories that uh, I didn't necessarily research. So Mark's going to take it off. It's going to be a mystery bag. I don't know what the stories are. Mark, what is it? Oh, no, don't do that to me. Okay. You didn't You didn't give me any prep for that. There's All right, a Mark's, lot of good shit. Mark's going to talk I'm about- I'm going to start with impeachment. Mark's going to talk about impeachment. There we go. All right, guys, uh, any big news today? Was there any big news yesterday? Any know. big news today? You know that thing. Only the uh, third president ever to get impeached. That's right. The witch hunt by the Democrats has been completed. They said Donald Trump was made of wood, and they tested their theory by getting a very heavy duck and weighing the two. And it turns out they weighed the same amount of weight, which means he's made of wood, which means he's a witch. Monty Python, anyone? No. It's Monty Python. Totally the missed the whole thing. Okay. Well, I knew you were referencing something. He called it a witch hunt, and then I did a little witch joke for Monty Python. But all jokes aside, yesterday was a historic day. After what seems like a hundred hours of uh, House floor debate on impeachment, the House representatives finally voted, and Donald Trump, the 45th president of the United States, became the third president to become impeached almost 20 years to the day uh, as the last president to become impeached, Slick Willie Bill Clinton. I think he was the 19th of December, so I think he, he was. was 20 years to today. Yeah. So, yeah, very close. I got to tell very you, similar. super bizarre situation where while Trump was being impeached, he was giving a, ra- a rally speech. Yeah, I'm going to get to that. Total juxtaposition. Yeah, I'm going to get to that. Well, I mean, that was smart. The, the debate was brutal, though, wasn't it? Like, they thought it was never going to end. They thought it was never going to go to vote. Wes had a bet on, like, like a long shot bet that the vote would be tomorrow or today. Yeah, the 19th. Th- I guess they yeah. gave the Republicans that, that extra time that they wanted. They, so. knew, they knew they were not going to go home until the vote. Right. So they kind of, yeah. like... Yeah, they, it, they got my hopes up for sure. Yeah, they did. Um, <laughs> but it was like fucking forever. It was like, eight hours and 30 minutes. Well, that's what happens when you have 400 plus people each getting to say what they want to say for a couple minutes. And th- that it was interesting to think about that because we knew it was going to happen. We knew the Dems were going to impeach, but the Republicans wanted to get up and say their piece. Right. Which I thought was effective. I mean, they made their point. But I watched the whole outside thing. of a few funny things I'll get to or unique things I'll get to, like they could have just had two people, one representative from Democrats and one from the Republicans talking for like 30 minutes because they they for the most part said the same things. Right. One, two different things. One side versus one side. But those guys have huge boners for history. Yeah. And that was a mm-hmm. huge history boner day. They all wanted yeah. in the transcripts. Oh, my God. Pelosi's they were, they were all referencing. Day. They were referencing P- fucking like founding fathers P- and shit. Pelosi mm. floated out of bed, had her favorite coffee or tea. And she, it was just, it was her day, and, and yeah, big, big day. Um, in fact, it was almost 100% party line in the vote. Two of the 240 or whatever Democrats, however many there are, 260, whatever, voted no or nay. One of, 233. Two, yeah, one of which was uh, the guy transitioning to be Republican, so we knew he was going to vote uh, nay. And the other is a person in a very Republican district that Trump won by like 31 points. So he's just trying to like get reelected, even though he's a Democrat, so he voted nay. Uh, and then there was Sweet Tulsi, the queen of the white pantsuit, uh. who voted present. Like a what? smart ass. Uh, in all seriousness, <laughs> the what, fuck's her problem? what the fuck was she doing? The fuck's her problem? No, but like, uh, I get it. She's, is she trying to get the VP of the Republican Party? What's her strategy? There's got to be a strategy here. Because she's a Democrat. She Ev- just, everyone voted uh, across the party line. She's she working is, for Russia, she man. She is pissed. She is no. pissed at the Democratic National Convention. She's pissed at the Democratic Party. I get it. But just what present? Fuck off. All the Republicans. <laughs> she's got to have a play. There's all an of, angle. All of the Republicans voted nay. One of the broadcasts had like a Republican voting uh, uh, yes. And they're like, oh, that's a mistake. Uh, no. All the Republicans yeah. voted no. Uh, but it doesn't matter because the House has a, a pretty big majority. Uh, the, sorry, the Democrats have a pretty big majority in the House, so it happened. He got impeached. Now, yeah. Mark, I got asked this four times today. Mm-hmm. Uh, when does he have to leave the office? What do you mean? Well, uh, you know what oh, I mean. Oh, because people don't understand what exactly. impeachment means. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> got it. Uh, no, he doesn't have to leave the office. Um, so He ain't leaving. Uh, the Senate will vote eventually uh, to remove or not remove, and it's not an impeachment vote. He's impeached. The impeachment's done. Uh, eventually, Nancy Pelosi, who teased that it might be not soon, is they're gonna the, the House is going to release the articles of impeachment to the Senate to vote whether he should be removed or not. The reason they're going to probably delay, and this came out today, but it's been talked about, is because they want to wait till the Senate agrees to some terms 
for the hearing, like that they'll hear people testify, specific people testify, and that they'll give it an actual hearing as opposed to just fucking say, this is bullshit, and quickly say, no, he's not being removed. Right. So the Senate thing might not be till who knows, February, March, we'll see. After the bowl games. Right, after the bowl games. But he's not leaving office probably probably ever, probably not until November, probably four years from November. Yeah, but yeah. Um, he's not moving off, removing office from impeachment. That's not how that works. But like I said, it was Nancy's day. She got her win yesterday, and she's probably uh, going to be drinking peach schnapps all Christmas, shouting, I'm peached, when mm. she's uh, getting buzzed. You know what I mean? Get it? Yeah, I got it. I'm peached. She fucked up, man. She yeah. loves this. I, and I, I couldn't move. help but think while watching this thing that this is a fuck up. And look, I'm not a Trump guy. You guys know that. But man, there was just something. Something about it was like, what? What is going on here? Like, like so something quick. felt weird. But was so quick. If you're saying she fucked up, which a lot of people are, she fucked up on September 24th when she made it official. Right. And yes. said, I'm bringing. She didn't fuck up today. today I don't mean Pelosi fucked up. I mean yeah. the, the Dem leadership. So today or yesterday? She didn't fuck up yesterday. Yesterday was her day. It, it was the culmination of that September 24th thing. She drew the line. She crossed the Rubicon, whatever you want to say, on September 24th, and it had to go forward. She got it in before Christmas. Probably not going to come into anything because the Senate's going to vote no. He's staying. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, so that's what's going on. And like you mentioned, Trump held a rally in Saginaw, Michigan, where he did a live speech for like two hours uh, during the vote. It was like during the later part, like towards the vote, and then you know for an hour and a half after the vote. We watched some of that on PBS. And let me tell you, the crowd... The crowd was incredible and the biggest we've ever seen. It was bigger than the Peach Bowl. Yeah. The second Peach joke. <laughs> he said 20,000 got turned away. Yeah. Some, right. Something real weird happened during that during that speech where he started talking about how he liked old light bulbs uh, in, in favor of the energy efficient light bulbs. And he said he's bringing back old light bulbs. <laughs> why, why would you bring back less efficient light bulbs? And then he was like, and he's like you know what else is those uh, less efficient dishwashers? Right. He's like, who here likes old light bulbs? And sinks. Like, We're bringing them back. I like to hear them pop. Right. <laughs> I like to screw them in every month. Um, Play your crowd. Here's a few notable things from that debate that happened prior to the vote. Uh, Representative Jim Jordan defended Trump and said, when you drain the swamp, the swamp fights back, referring to Pelosi and the Democrats. Uh, Representative John Ratcliffe said, history may also shortly reflect he'll be the first president to be reelected after being wrongfully impeached because Clinton, um, it was a second term. So yeah. I guess he, uh, he was on the way out. Right. And then Representative Russ Fulcher uh, a Republican from Idaho said, in a day of heavy and verbal debate, I choose to use my time to repeat in detail every high crime misdemeanor committed by the president of the United States. I will do so now. And then Fulcher just stood at the microphone silent for a while. It was like a joke. Like, there were no crimes. Get right. it? Hilarious. Moment of silence. He must um, be fun at parties. Last one. Yeah, right. <laughs> Representative uh, Sean Patrick Maloney, a Democrat from New York, said, uh, like a tin can tied to his leg, President Trump's impeachment will rattle behind him through the pages of history. And it will stick with him. Um, but... It, he, like we said, I, I would vote, I would bet anything that he won't be removed. Oh. But it will, oh, 100%. it will chap his ass. And twenty years from now, ten years from now, when he's writing his memoirs and stuff, he will be, he won't like this. He's, well, he doesn't like this. Point being, he had a, sh he has a shot to win the next election, and this is not gonna. I don't see it negatively affecting him. No. Yeah. No. It, it's, no. it riled up his base like crazy. He will get reelected. He will not be removed. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I, I'm more to the side of it. You can't really rile up the Republicans come out and vote. That's that's my yeah. point. Republicans are going to vote every election, so I don't think it riled them up to. It, they're they're going to be louder. But you're making him sympathetic. They're, they're going to be louder. The one thing he was they're going to be louder publicly. They're going to be louder on on social media and stuff like that. But I think that they're going to come out and vote anyways, and he's the favorite to win whether this happened or not. Yeah. Um, I guess it's something to talk about or fight about with the family over the holidays, though. At least, right? Uh, if you want to deflect from all the shit that went wrong in your life this year and not answer any tough questions from the family. Bring up impeachment like pitching a rare steak into a pack of wild dogs and exit stage left. <laughs> mm -hmm. Get yep. out of there. Go to the basement. And, uh, and I bid you adieu. Now let's take it to the internet for a few comments. Husker Cookie said, it's a coup and people will go to prison. So she's fun at parties, too. Yeah, she's an idiot. Yeah. So don't cookie. knock on her door in the next couple of days, Mormons or whoever. What is this thing about just people not understanding what <laughs> words mean? <laughs> she's going to be pissed. Um, Nacho Donut says, Trump stays president and you feel sad. That is the most likely scenario, even if you don't want to believe it. Pro yeah, it's, it's, it's profound. A, it's, a, it's, it's a 50 percent or more likely scenario. And Donna Hartenstein says, I abhor him, but feeling sad for the U.S., which is a, which is, I think, a pretty good take, because whatever side you're on, first of all, this partisan shit is, is ridiculous. We try to, like, you know, laugh at everyone here. Partisanship's a little bit ridiculous, in my opinion. Um, and yeah, it's sad for the U.S. You don't want a U.S. president be, to be impeached. But yeah, impeachment's not supposed to be used like this. it's embarrassing. Yeah. They did what they did. Yeah. Yeah. All right.
All right, guys, this one is just great. Uh, we've all heard stories of dumb criminals, right? Guys who leave their wallets in stolen cars, cell phones at bank heist, uh, loads of DNA at crime scenes, etc. Well, hold et on. Cetera. The DNA thing, that's, yeah. Sometimes sometimes your hormones get the best to you, you know what I mean? You right. can't control it. Hard to not leave DNA. Not sometimes. like your wallet, you know what I mean? Right. But this one is just... Ah! Well, this one's just kind of adorably stupid. Um, a man in California is being charged with uh, robbing a caricature artist of $500, which I imagine is a lot for a caricature artist. Uh, but what's great about this story is the man who robbed him was also a customer and had commissioned the highly skilled <laughs> artist to draw him at the Festival of Lights in Riverside, California. Uh, but as the man sat there trying to make his most prominent features smaller in any way he could, uh, he was also nervously awaiting for just the right time to carry out his robbery. And in his tiny mind, that time was just as the artist was putting the finishing, tu finishing touches on his professionally drawn police sketch in caricature form. Why do you keep, did, call, yeah. why do you keep saying tiny? Did you capture? Huh? Yeah, did you capture me? Because of the si this tiny guy. mind. Because he's stupid. He's also five feet one inches tall. Oh man! <laughs> the guy was five feet tall, which is so he's got this caricature sketch, <laughs> yeah. and the fact that everyone called him five foot one, so he's probably really four foot eleven. Yeah, you got to engage the caricature artist uh, to rob him, but you want to rob early. You want to rob before he right. gets too right. far down the line with right. your with your police sketch. Yeah, yes. exactly. This, that's why he's got a tiny mind. And uh, now Riverside police are looking for a man with an extremely large head for his body, right? And perhaps the world's largest big uh, upper lip. He might be driving. Around in a tiny car, yeah, <laughs> carrying a tennis out. racket, yeah, yeah, right. whatever Roger he's rabbit. interested in. Right. Um, <laughs> a so. giant tennis <laughs> racket. What are your hobbies? <laughs> and his little legs, his little legs fit in a tiny car, and his head seven times the size of it. You like yeah. football? Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so the police released the, the sketch in hopes the public can identify the, sub, uh, the suspect with the note. This caricature is of the suspect, but of course has exa exaggerated characteristics and features. Yes, yeah, so, of so course. they want to remind you this isn't exactly what he looks like. It is awesome though. He he gave like the sketch artist the day off. He he saved the sketch artist <laughs> yeah. uh, like from doing the job because he just left the sketch. Yeah, it's it's pretty hilarious. Crime so, of opportunity. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. A pioneer of education was wrongfully terminated on Monday from a North Attleboro uh, high school in Massachusetts for okay. keeping keeping things a little bit too real. Okay. So this substitute teacher, your favorite uh, type, man, yeah, it's my favorite type of teacher. Uh, it's a throwaway job. It's the best job on the planet. <laughs> uh, this substitute teacher uh, who was probably encouraging his students to call him teach uh, was leading a discussion about marijuana when he employed an alternative teaching method called flipping the script. And in this case, the script he flipped was lighting up a fatty in class. He just smoked a, a, a pre roll Yeah, he brought a prop, a show and tell. <laughs> he just, yeah, he he just got high. He decided this job wasn't for him. So let's, yeah, he, yeah. He, was like, he was like, I was going to do this at home, <laughs> yeah. and then I got a call to come in here. But yeah. Why not make so, $100 right, while doing right. it? Yeah, it turns out that the, uh, the teach got busted because his classroom was filled with a bunch of never laid snitches that told the principal teach had turned the reel up one notch too loud. Mm. Yeah, that's unfortunate. It's very unfortunate, man. You should probably not. It's 2019. Who the fuck is telling their fucking principal when they're like when they're sub? You, you're it's a substitute teacher. Let it go. It's the saddest yeah. job in the world. The guy that yeah. the guy that gives like a hippie name. Yeah, you're like Mr. Hippie it lo 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 loaded up a fanny and smoked it. Just yeah. let him be. Principal. A lot, yeah. a lot of narcs in high school. Yeah. yeah, it's true. And Principal Peter Haviland, a man who will never experience true love praised students for showing maturity and courage during an experience that he called unfortunate and unprecedented. And awesome. <laughs> and fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah it's better than the Unfortunate because the, the principal wasn't in there smoking with him. Yeah, beats wheel in the media card in. I mean, it, it would be kind of scary if all of a sudden your substitute teacher started smoking in class. You right. don't know what he's going to do next. Well, that's the whole point. You yeah. got to keep an eye on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't know what he's up you to. You got to keep an eye on where scary? his hands are going. Yeah, it would be. He's got You're the, in he's high got, school. He's got enough balls to do that, that shit. Grow the he fuck up. He obviously isn't smart enough to know what the fuck to do. He might start a fight club yeah. in class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck, it would man. be very It'd be better in history. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> this school, in my opinion, should be ashamed of themselves for punishing an educator who isn't afraid to tell it like it is and selflessly demonstrate the dangerous effects of the hardcore street drug marijuana on himself as a deterrent. So I yeah, he's like, look at me, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. He's like, you, look, look at look at lifetime of marijuana. I'm kids, a substitute teacher. You don't want to end up subbing. Y'all y'all do whatever the fuck y'all want now. <laughs> that was a van. That was like the current age van down by the river. Yeah, he was sacking himself. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was a sacrifice fly. <laughs> 
puts on the movie. All right, uh, guys, the ACLU tackles many important social issues, issues that really matter and help spread equality across this great nation of ours. And now they are tackling an issue that has been weighing on me for quite some time. And thank God they are putting all their manpower on this one. And that is the issue of menstrual equality. Yes, you heard that right. Menstrual equality. Those two words don't go together. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I get moody every once in a while. Do you? Yeah. Okay, well, this is a little yeah. different. You don't bleed from I your vagina. No, I just um, probably from my brain. Yeah. And to do this, they are proposing that all men's rooms now have tampons in them because, as the ACLU puts it, they do not want to discriminate against, quote, every person who menstruates. Saying while free menstrual products are not uniformly provided, or while free menstrual products are uniform or not uniformly provided in women's restroom, they are almost never available in men's restrooms, um, even for pay. Yeah, so. for very good reason. Well, wait, 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 so you're saying no. these are men's rooms, so these are not uni bathrooms. These there's, are not unisex bathrooms. There's, these are men's rooms yeah, that are being required. There's to have. clearly two reasons for it. Mm-hmm. One is for a like a dad. That doesn't have the mom around. That has a teenage daughter, or a preteen daughter, and the other is like, for, "Are you having your period? Come in the other men's is room for with transgender me. people in southern states that don't want to get beat up, and they're transgendering from male to, or from female to male or whatever, but they still mm. bleed. Like for like yes. a transgender person or yes. a, or a dad that doesn't have a, a lady around. You're ruining the story, Mark. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm, I'm just giving you two reasons why it's happening. Well, you're you're right on you're right on one of them. I don't know why the girl couldn't just go into the bathroom and get it herself, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, they, if you're old enough to have your period, yeah. you can go in the fucking women's room. <laughs> if yeah. it's her first period, she what does she know, get? She doesn't know what the fuck she's doing. Is the dad gonna apply it? Is he gonna bust the applicator out? I don't know. This is why you're never going to be a dad, though. <laughs> um, they also went on to say Watch. that it isn't fully accurate to say women are the only ones who menstruate, well, uh, give true. birth, or breastfeed. So you guys can <laughs> you guys can read between the lines here. This is for the trans community. Right, that's what I said. As people who were uh, born women uh, with all the working lady parts are transgendering oh, into okay. men. All so right, then I'm, I'm behind I it. guess it wouldn't be southern states. It would be the states that... They're allowed to go Just to all the states. bathroom. I'm, b- they, I'm behind it. Right, right. Yeah. So some will keep those biological capabilities, such as the ability to menstruate, lactate, and carry a child, all while growing a nice thick mustache and using the men's bathroom. <laughs> um, Taking big shits. Yeah. And according to the ACLU, the rest of the public. <laughs> well, hang on. If you bleed out, if you bleed out of your ass, <laughs> you would a tampon help? No, man. Uh, no. I'm yeah, sure I mean, it, yes, it would help. It's yeah. literally a device. Got, like, what if you got Crohn's disease and, and you've been eating Taco Bell and you're bleeding out of the ass? You, you, uh, would a tampon up the ass help a man? Probably. No, man. I, I mean, it is a stopper. I'm getting close to needing to try it out. <laughs> we, let us know how that. We yeah. got to get through this story. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, so according I'm to the ACL, according to the ACL, the rest of the public should not should be conscious of that and not discriminate against any uh, any uh, against them by not providing tampons in proper places to dispose of them. Um, this new proposal follows a controversial tweet that the group posted on International Men's Day back on November 19th when they posted. There's no one way to be a man. Men who get their periods are men. <laughs> men who get <laughs> pregnant and give birth are men. That's awesome. Trans and non-binary men belong. I so. mean, also, you're missing out on a good one. This is a perfect <laughs> opportunity at, like, a bachelor party to, like, make fun of your boy. Like, y- y- hand him a tampon in front of strangers and laugh. You know? mm. It's like a good bathroom gag. Yeah. Who cares? I mean, probably a better way to spend the money, but who cares? Yeah. Right. Give them their tampons. Yeah. It's not going to bother me to have tampons in the men's bathroom. No. All right, guys. Tonight is a big fucking night because it's the fourth Democratic debate, uh, and we're having a little not pro- even close. Boy, it's, it's like the, the sixth, sixth. It's sixth, the seventh. Seven, yes. They keep having these things. <laughs> There's a Democratic ba- debate tonight. We're having a little Democratic uh, commercial watch party as we always do. It's gonna be sponsored by our homies at Predict It. And uh, what's really cool, if you don't know about Predict It, it's a place you can bet or gamble on politics and the news in a stock market format. It's legal in all fifty states. Uh, it's really pretty easy to make cash if you have half a brain. Uh, Apparently, I don't because I lost big fucking last night. Yeah, on you just called us nitwits. Yeah, anyway. Dimwits. Our, 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 our commercial debate watch party starts at uh, 7.30 Eastern. We're going to do a pre-show, and let's run down some of the predicted debate-specific markets that are going to be up. So the markets are, who will speak the most at the Democratic debate uh, tonight? Uh, Warren is leading the pack right now at 41 cents. I believe she was the leader at the last debate. Last two. Exactly. And, and Biden... The one or two before that, so it's usually those two. And my man, my man, Mayor Pete, he got third. Was like a close third. Got third yeah. And yeah, also close. on the converse, there's the uh, the least speaking time of the debate. And guess who's leading that pack? Well, it's been Yang every time but one. He was last. He wasn't two times ago. He was three times ago. So it's been Yang most of the times. But he he is leading the pack. 
spoiler alert, like you were spoiling. Haven't heard um, much of him. But he, he did have that big shit fest where he's right, like, like he didn't get a chance to talk. Right, so I think that based, there's, gonna a, there's gonna be like a sorrow. I would bet no on him having least speaking time because they're gonna yes they're gonna do a, a mea culpa. They're gonna have to like mm. let him talk because he had, he threw a fucking fit last time. Yeah, it's gonna be pasty Tom Steyer who no one knows. He's, he was he was like throwing out racism type stuff. Oh yeah, it so was big, the Democrats uh, are not gonna have him speak. The least they're gonna let him open the show. I bet he's gonna have right. like a song and dance number. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Steyer's number two at forty four cents. You might want to get in on that. I like that. Yeah. yeah. And I like no on Yang. No on Yang. Just because it won't be him. Get in there right now. Because when yeah. the when yeah, you, when, bet Steyer, when someone's well leading down. the pack and you think it's not going to happen, that's a great opportunity. If by Yang now. has the least speaking time, he's going to drop out. But before he does, he's going to throw like, it's, "This is racist. This is bullshit," and it's going to be a black eye. So I would, I would not I, no on Yang. Or it's, or it's going to be hilarious. If it's yes Yang, it's going to be hilarious. Stay away from Yang. Yeah. Uh, a couple others. How many debaters will say billionaire and mm-hmm. how many debaters will say Rudy or Giuliani? So for debaters billionaire, um looking at uh Keen Dog's charts which he'll be giving us advice tomorrow on the pre-show. Uh both Warren and Sanders have said billionaire every single debate. Right. Yeah. So five, that's two. 5 6 that's or 6. Two. So that's two guaranteed. They've said it they led the show off with billionaires in their opening statements last time. Yeah. Um, so there's two. So it has to be more. Steyer is a billionaire, so you think he might say. No, he won't. So, that, so you subtract <laughs> the one there. only billionaire. No, no, he didn't. The he didn't as last the time. only yeah, billionaire. He did say that last time. Mm, I think it was around four or five last time because after Warren and uh, Sanders opened the show with billionaire, a few other people piled on. So mm. I would go between three and five. Anyway, that's the party, guys. If you want to get on the action, go to predictit.org slash promo slash hardfactor20. We will match your first deposit up to $20. So you put 20 bucks in, we'll give you a free 20 It's fantastic. Tune in tonight. We're going to be live on Periscope and live on our Instagram on Barstool News Network. Uh, it's going to be fantastic. Yeah. It's gambling. Let's win some money live. Let's win some money. And, yeah, we're going to have Keen Dog from Star Spangled Gamblers, who, like, he's just like fucking golden child, apparently. I'm just picks. following his picks. I got kind of pissed at Keen Dog today because I texted him about uh, what I should do with the uh, with with the uh, impeachment shit, and he just texted me a link to his blog, oh. which is like Keen Dog slash genius. And I was like, come on, Keen Dog. He's already sick of me. I've been DMing him. <laughs> he, he's already he's already sick of me. He wants to do it on the show. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. We'll, have, we'll have the Keen guy Dog's on tomorrow. Keen Dog's got thousands of people doing this. <laughs> we'll have our guy on tomorrow. <laughs> All right, guys, what's the cutest thing in the world? And hint, it's definitely not a newborn baby. A kitten. If you say your son. No. He's great. I mean, he's awesome. Still not the cutest Very thing in the world. Cute. Okay, cool. A baby polar bear. Okay. It's yeah. really big well, of you, Wes. All right. Well, if you didn't say puppy, you're incorrect. I knew, par- I knew oh. Mark was going to go kitten. It's yeah. fair enough. Uh, puppies are God's way of reminding us all that he exists and loves us. Right up there with liquor and weed, right? Uh, but not so fast. Mix the three, and it's just a party. Yeah, yes. wait a minute. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So, but not so fast. Does God really love us, or is he using puppies as a way to infect us and give us the shits? Whoa. Yeah. Maybe so, according to the CDC, which is claiming that these harmless and adorable creatures are causing an outbreak of an infection called Campylobacter jejuni. Um, already sounds like bullshit, right? Yeah. I've never said this, yeah. but fake news. Yeah, well, I was going to say, like, no matter what the story says, yeah. the next time I see a puppy, I'm not going to remember the story. Exactly. Yeah, I'm going to make out with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yep. A little puppy do. breath. Yeah. This I'm gonna, like, come here, me. motherfucker. I'm going to yeah. borderline sexually assault that this puppy because <laughs> I want to be in it. This is a camouflage <laughs> by God that will never be, it'll, yeah. it'll always work. It's the only yeah, thing yeah. that can heal the the hole in my heart. Yeah. Right. If God wants to kill us all, he would in- infect puppies with, like, the plague. The CDC's got no chance. Yeah. And vaginas. Um, but the CDC insists that this outbreak, which has already infected, good, good one, Pat, yeah, uh, which has already infected like that, huh? 30 people in 13 states, is resistant to drugs. That's not that many. And yeah, not that many. 30 and, people in 13 states right. got the runs. Kill yeah. them. Yep. And while oh, not no. necessarily <laughs> deadly, symptoms are uh, not that cute and include diarrhea, stomach cramps due to diarrhea, and fever, which will all cure themselves in about a week. We like, got we got tampons in men's bathrooms. This is a nothing. Why story. bring these non stories over? I fucking I'd, yeah. I'd get uh, <laughs> cancer to hang out with a puppy. Can we just shit. talk about the cutest types of puppy? Puppies sure. or is, or is if you guys, is, if you want to cancel the story, let's yeah, do it. I'm a mixed guy. I'm like sucks. a mixed puppy. I like um, I don't 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 bad mouth puppies, man. I'm not. I'm 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 defending puppies. I'm I'm saying this is bullshit. Okay. And so far, Are you? four people. Yes, I am. And so far, four people suffered diarrhea so severe Ooh. they had to go, be hospitalized. You're really reading a story where you're talking about four people suffering diarrhea? If yes. you go to the hospital it's, for it's, diarrhea. It's at the beginning stages, Pat. This is how yeah. you yeah, stop you, things. If, if you go to the hospital for diarrhea and you don't live in fucking Africa, the whole, the whole, you're a loser. You're, this is yeah, how you stop. You're the whole ambulance ride. You're like, it was that damn puppy. <laughs> yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Uh, so authorities are blaming pet store puppies, you know, the ones in the window, coaxing you in right. with their adorable, playful nature and pleased to be rescued. Yeah, I heard because, the song. Because yeah. buying a puppy is the exact same thing as rescuing a, a dog. Let's just just thought I'd throw that out there. And they think that because many of those infected were pet store workers, 
you know, they there's put a, they, they yeah, put it may, together. Maybe it's the pet store worker. Yeah, they're they a dirty bunch. It could be. You yeah. ever smelled they, a pet store worker? They do they, handle a lot of birds. Maybe it's the fucking gerbils and off birds. Shift. Yeah. Why? Why are they blaming it on the fucking puppies? I don't know. Walk into a pet All store, right, see if you can skip. deal with it for one minute. Those people live there. Okay, get out, get out of there. They have not been able to track down any single supplier of devil puppies and urge people who cannot resist holding a puppy, so 99.9% of us, uh, to wash their hands after doing so. And if you must buy a puppy mill puppy from a pet store, take it right to the vet for a checkup before letting it lick your toddler's face. Or not. Don't even. Just get the puppy. Yeah, just get the puppy. All right, guys. I think I've got the the last story of the show here. So uh, rap artist. Wait, that's not right. I'm sorry. Rapist. (laughs) Takashi69 still has rainbow hair. Which is unfortunate for him because he was sentenced to two years in proper prison for racketeering the other day. He's got people dyeing his hair in prison? I mean, I think he's just still growing out. Oh. Yeah, he just hasn't cut it. I would have changed that. Personally, that's me. Uh, it seems the former troublemaker and gang member from Brooklyn learned from his mistakes over the last 13 months in custody as evidenced by a remorseful speech he gave in court saying that he failed the young fans that look up to him and then and the, uh, when he was out, he would change his ways. He even went so far as to directly apologize to a woman who was shot in the foot uh, in a gunfight involving Takashi, saying, I'm sorry about your foot. That's nice of him. He needed a walker. <laughs> hey, kids out there, don't offer two stacks for a hit. No. So that's sweet stuff, guys. This 23-year-old millionaire who carried out uh, at least three shootings terrorizing New York City uh, with his uh, set of bloods on the heels of his 2015 arrest for filming a 13-year-old performing sex acts and posting it to Instagram is reformed, guys. And in two short years, he'll be sharing the air that you breathe as a new man. And that's America. Yeah, he's going to get murdered. Let's take it to the Internet. Uh, Ellen Black says, is Takashi really dead or just rumors? Um, I don't know. But he's not dead. Remember to check in. Huh? Yeah. You got to check in. I'm not sure what you mean. Well, he will be is what Mark's saying. Yeah. You got to check in when you go to a city. If you're a gang affiliate. Oh, yes. You, you can't roll in. Yes, yes. That, we did learn that lesson. Oh, we did okay. learn that lesson. Takashi didn't know that. That's big. Yeah. And that's going to do it for Hard Factor. Thank you guys so much for listening. Hey, let me say something. We really can't do this shit without you. We appreciate the fuck out of you. You guys let our uh, our dreams come true, essentially. We get, to, we get to do the best job in the world, and that's bring you guys the news. And we can't thank you enough for it. Uh, if you can, it would mean a lot to us to give us a five-star review on iTunes or Apple Podcasts, however you're using it. Uh, maybe a review would be cool, too. Uh, maybe some kind words. Tell all your relatives. It really is how yeah. we how we help Spread help this it. thing grow. And we need growth in 2020. We have a hardcore fan base of really awesome listeners, uh, the Hardo Hive, if you will. And we want to grow this thing way bigger uh, so we can bring the news to the world. Tune in tonight for our commercial debate watch party at 730 Eastern. And have a great fucking day. That's it. <laughs>